My name is Marcela, and me and Gibson will introduce you to this new feature that is Data Engine that's going to help you to create and manage your data more easily. First, let's imagine that you are about to build your new application, and the first thing that you will worry about is your data and how you're going to store it, access it, or even modify it. But besides that, you will have to worry about also with your business logic. Because it's this logic that's going to represent your, your application to your, to your customers, and you, you finally uh, deliver your value. So, and we all know that um, implementing this crude operation with our data is kind of boring and a repetitive task. So, wouldn't it be great if we just can focus on our business logic and don't worry and don't waste so many hours building our crude operation? Today in Life Ray, how it works. Today, if you have to uh, create a new structure, we have to follow these steps. The first one is to create a bundle with Blade CLI. The second one, you have to declare your entity in a service.xml file. After, you have to implement all your crude, your crude work uh, in the service package. And after that, you have to keep in mind that if you change anything in the future, you have to come back and be sure that your code can handle it. Because besides that, you have to come back to your crude and refactor it. Um, this work, uh, Service Builder helped us a lot with that, but maybe we want more a uh, simple process than that. We don't want to waste so many time doing this process. Or maybe we want more flexibility to manage our created data. We want, uh, just like here, we have this data address, and we want to change our, its layout, or even add more fields without having to go to the code. We, have, we want more flexibility. So for all these reasons, we create Data Engine. Uh, and we are aware that customers usually uh, use forms as a solution for low-code application. But what we need to do here is to give the same flexibility of forms, not only for our business customers, but also for our developers. So the main goal of Data Engine is to deliver this API that allows our developers to build their application as they want and where they want, like consuming outside life free. Here uh, is an example of an application that we could build using Data Engine, our uh, insurance code. We, uh, we have this structure, address information, and Data Engine allows you to use this allows you to consume this structure from different applications, just like here, um, and enables you to also have different visualization of the same structure. But remember, in the end, the users from both applications, the both technology, will be feeling the same structure. Besides that, Data Engine allows you to store your data anywhere you want, uh, and also organize it, like in folders. In addition to all that I said, Data Engine is part of the headless API of Lifery DXP. And it enables us to call it servers besides our, the technology we are using it. So if your technology allows you to use call REST servers, you can use Data Engine. So you can build on Lifery and use it and render anywhere you want. And here I'm going to introduce some concepts about of data engine, like data definition. That is your basic data. It is your YAC structure. You're going to define it. After, we're going to define our data layout. That is how we organize it uh, visually, our data. And after, we, wanna, we will create our data record collection that is going to organize our records. OK, let's build our first app, this insurance code. And we will need some information first, like personal information, uh, car insurance, or even home insurance. The first step of our application to build our application using Data Engine 
is to create Aldera definition. Aldera definition is where you create, you set all the field types that you want to your data. And besides that, we have another properties like name and description, validation. You can set a field as a record. And you can set the storage type of your future records from, the, from that data. In our example, we use personal information. So just like here, using data engine, we can write it just like a JSON file. Here, you can see that we describe it all the field types that we have in personal information. I just put uh, two properties, field type and name. But you can add others, like uh, tip, whatever. We, we can customize it as you want. And, uh, and we also put here description and a name. The next step, we have to uh, decide uh, the visually, um, you have to decide our layout for our data. With Data Engine, um, it allows you to create many layouts as you want for the same, uh, the same data. We create one or even two layouts, but why not three if we want to? Data Engine allows us this flexibility so we can uh, adapt to any need we might need in the future. So we can add any layout we want without having to duplicate our structure just to add or remove any field. We can still use the same structure and just creating any layouts we want to any need we might have. Uh, in our example is this layout free. Uh, each layout has a set of pages, and each page has the property of name and description as well. Uh, each page has the set of rows. Each row has a set of columns. Each column has two properties, that is the size of the column and the field names that we're going to share that space in that column. Here you can see that I set this example. Uh, the first row has two columns and they are dividing the, the row. It's simple as that. You, we can create a data layout. OK, our app is almost done. And it's done. And we can, and can collect the data from our users. Here you can see two random uh, records from different persons. And these records in Data Engines is represented by data record. And it's also, it's uh, it's easy to create one. Uh, the data record is a map that the key of this map is the field name, and the value is its value. So it's easy as it is. Uh, the first name, you can see here, there is the Jane value, last name, do, and so goes on. With just like this information, you create your records to your application. Uh, with Data Engine, we can organize our records. We can organize them into folders if you want to. We just have to build this logic to save in uh, the collection we want to. And this folder in Data Engine is represented by Data Record Collection. And how can we build, how can uh, we create a Data Record Collection? Data Record Collection is is this simple. We have only the description, the name, and the only thing that we have to remember to put is the ID of the data definition, because we, can have, we have to make this link between them. So this way, you can create as many collections you want, so you can organize your records. And you see, with only these three steps, uh, there are data definition, data layout, data record, and collection, we created our application and it's ready. We didn't have to waste so many hours with this crude operation. And if you are curious, tomorrow we are going to uh, have our workshop that we're going to build this application from zero. We're going to use uh, this meta, no, React application. And so you're going to see that we are using React but we are consuming from life free, and it is easy. And right now, I'm going to call Jason to explain more extension points from our data engine. Thank you, Masala. Uh, 
So we have some extension points regarding data engine. The first, uh, the first one is data storage. Uh, if you work at with storage adapter with forms, you might be familiar of what I'm talking about. It's a way to you to manage uh, the records that are saved in data engine uh, in outside outside library or in another manner that you want. For example, you have some confidential data, some sensitive data that want, do you don't you don't want to store inside library. But so you can uh, implement a data storage and save it wherever you want. You can save, get, and, and delete this data from the wherever you want. It's an extension point. And besides that, we have custom validations. Custom validations are uh, simple validations that we can perform on fields. Uh, you can implement uh, uh, an interface called data role function. And it, val it validates what you want. For example, if some uh, text field match some pattern that you pre, -pre define, like a credit card number or something else. And it returns a data role function with a status and a message. So uh, we have a product that we are building that makes a heavy use of data engine. And I'm going to show it. To you right now, it's a live code. So as we know, live codes never go wrong. And let's do it now. So we have this product, App Builder, that created uh, dynamic structures and uses data engine for that. For example, when you, you are defining an, a table, an instructor, in Ceph's XML using Ceph's Builder, this is a static. You have to write the XML, and you have to deploy it, and then it, it is created. With Data Engine, you do it uh, dynamically. So for example, here, I can create the uh, like new custom object called customer. And what is doing now? First, it's creating a data definition, the structure. And it, it will create the data layout, as Marcela said before. So for example, if I put the text field here, two sorry. Clicks. Two clicks. It's better. <laughs> and put a customer name. And I can put another text field here called customer address. And click customer details or entry. Entry is better. OK, so what I'm doing now, when I click Save, it will create both the structure dynamically, as you are creating a table using Ceph's XML, using, using uh, Ceph's Builder. And it will create a data layout that you use to input, to, create, to add, and to edit entries for customers. Now we can create a, a list for this customer. I'll just add a customer name. We're going to show, call it customer list. So now we are going to deploy our, our app, because App Builder is a, that we are building is a low-code uh, application builder. So it, it creates applications uh, dynamically based on what Data Engine provides. That is this, crea this, this dynamic creation of structures. So we are going to sele select the entry here, the list that we created. And then we'll deploy as a product menu in the control panel. Let's call it customer app deploy. OK. If you come here to control panel, it's already, it's already here. It's a fully functional code, dynamically generated, using app builder and data engine uh, behind it. So we can come here and create an entry. Customer name, it will be John. John, I think John is 
I don't know if James is right. John will be this way. And he'll live in Main Street. Main Street. And I'll save. OK, what happened now? Uh, when I created the, the, the definition, the, the data definition, the data layout, a uh, data record collection, there is a folder where I saved my data, was, create, uh, was generated to. And here I'm inserting this record in the default data record collection of my data definition. So I can come here, for example, and indeed my data. And I can come here and delete. Nothing of this, nothing of, uh, about this persistence is being, is being made by something generated by uh, a table created on Ceph's XML. This is created dynamically by Data Engine. So Data Engine gives you the flexibility to, to manage data, to create, read, update, and delete data, uh, totally decoupled from, from the UI. And that's what App Builder is doing. It's relying on, on Data Engine to create uh, custom objects. Let me see here. So the road ahead. We have a few more improvements that we are planning to do, like native objects. The native objects that uh, I believe you, you guys already know that users and other, other native objects that we have in Portal, and rules that we have in Forms too, and other improvements like integration with workflow to not just focus, not just focus on the crude part, but on the business logic part too. So this is in our roadmap for the next versions. And that's it. Thank, Thank you. you. Mm -hmm.